at the catch, namely here, that's a pretty bad position, especially when everybody wants to have a quote unquote quick catch, which in my humble opinion is complete nonsense. We want a slow catch, a slow connection, but a precise catch. Precision always pays more. And it doesn't matter if you talk about stroke at 14 or 35. In relation, the catch is a pretty slow process. It's not quick. You can mess up so much at the catch. A quick catch is not what we're looking for. So it doesn't matter if you're a super beginner on the erg, you just pop by, saw this video about a pair, was interesting. No, a quick catch is, the intention of a quick catch messes up almost everything. No matter how good your preparation is, that aggressive leg drive, hard, but it's, forget it. It, it. It's not what you want. You want stability to hold the body so that you can use leverage over mid drive. Rowing is a leverage game. It has not much to do with pushing and pulling. One of the metaphors I use is that the seat has wheels, not for you to slide forward, but for the boat to travel underneath your butt. This is why it's got wheels. Um, and although it may technically not be 100% accurate, just the cue helps to move in the right way or not move. I think rowing is not so much about how you move, it's also how, how you make the boat go without moving yourself. This is where you see where bow woman is actually able to stabilize a bit better. Her shoulders are still responding a bit too late and you can see this here. Here at the catch, you see? I'm referring to that point where my cursor is. Laid in the water, now she feels the force and now you see that this one is tightening up a bit. Hello and a very warm welcome everybody. My name is Arm and recently I got a comment on YouTube asking, hey, could you talk about the beginner's pair? Well, not quite a beginner's pair to be honest, but I try my best. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in Budapest working with the Hungarian national team. And one of the projects they have is a women's pair. Super interesting, I think um, very, very good athletes. And the footage you see here is literally, uh, that's their third outing in a pair ever. Uh, and that is quite spectacular. So I must admit, this is not the average pair you will probably see at the beginning. It's all about, oh, I just want to fall into the water and how do you tap down? They were pretty brave. The, so these ladies are, I think they're super tough and I think um, they're going to make it far, but so far for now. So what I want to show you, this is, um, this is how I met them. So we were on the water, we were looking at a bunch of boats and, you know, trying to select and for pairs and, but that's all early, trying to find early projects and all that stuff. So that was the first time I saw this. Um, the good thing about this pair is that they actually dare to tap down. So that's good. Their blades come off the water. Um, they have already found their rhythm. So they're very proficient in sculling. And uh, it's one of Attila Lorenz's projects. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. The current national coach for Hungary as a part of, um, I think there are three people running this entire thing. So when you look at them row, the way they do it and the way they handle it is quite spectacular. So the blades off the water, that's great. Um, the way they get out of the water, that's super well synced. So this is, some, this is key. Whenever you want to row a pair, um, getting, getting the blades out of the water at the same time with the same intensity is what's going to set the boat. Now, most people never realize that. So they just tap out whenever they want. But consistency in, in, in sweep rowing, that's absolutely key. You cannot... Um, tap down with a certain depth or handle depth in the boat. So meaning <clears throat> that one, tap down. Oh, and the next one, I'm gonna tap that much down. Forgot about, oh, I forgot about it. Woo, tap down on the next one. That's all gonna be offsetting the boat. So continuity and reliability is for me the key to pair rowing. This is what makes the pair the so-called most difficult boat class to row. You just need to be predictable and reliable um, and, and consistent. Now, the difficulty about this is that our attention span is usually not more than 90 seconds, especially not when we talk about a highly, um, a highly routine motion pattern, which means, you know, in, in, in a race we do, in a 2K we do 200, 250 reps, in a 1K it's maybe 120, 150 repetitions, full stroke cycles. Now, in, in a training you would do 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, depending on how long it is. You cannot be fully focused all the time, our brain can't handle that. So, most things have to be automated. And this is why working on technique is difficult. So I love to give, give myself um, a new trigger every 90 seconds to three, to three minutes. So one and a half to three minutes is usually what we can handle. Alrighty. Now, the tap down in this boat works excellent. That is 
I must admit, they started off very well. That's not your typical start of an appear. Um, and then the next thing they get going for them nicely is that the knees hold down sufficiently, not with bow, but stroke does it quite well. Uh, remember in the pair, you don't want to actually have the same force curves. I talked about this in different, um, two different videos actually. Um, the thing is that bow and stroke are in different positions in relation to where they are. So um, stroke is closer to the stern, bow is closer to the bow. So your influence on, on the turning angle of the boat is different, which means if your force curves are exactly the same, you will have to do a lot of steering. Look how clean bow woman gets out of the finish. That's a super, super composed way. That pause at the finish, I think, sets up the stage for the stability you have for the wrist. Yeah, so that was video one. So that was with the focus on uh, keeping the weight on the seat at the catch. So what I told him prior to this video taken was try to have most of your body weight on your seat, which means that the catch, light hands, which means that you can control your oar handles. And that's what they do absolutely well. Look at that, at the catch, they're now in a different position to before. Here, you see the shoulders, that pure arm motion doesn't, doesn't involve the entire trunk anymore. And it also stabilizes the trunk for the rest of the drive. So being light-handed at the catch, for me, is one of the main ingredients in order to have a fast boat. Um, super interesting, and I gotta say, I mean, this is Hungarian national team, they're top-notch for Hungary. That's really strong. I don't know how far they're gonna make it, but just their understanding, the majority they have, it's, it's quite outstanding. This is not your average boat, especially not in outing number four or five. Pretty cool. Now, you, what you see now is develop a, kind, a, a more stable, um, drive and by stable drive I'm referring to a the upper body not rotating at the catch not going up and I'm referring to B the blades being vertically stabilized in the water and as a beginner that's huge you have to understand this so whenever you row a boat don't don't shovel you don't want to move the water I mean you, that, that's not that's not that's not a water mill you actually want to put the blade in the water rest it where it naturally would rest if you let it float and then focus on the horizontal motion alone and that is it's so important because it teaches your body how to move. That's when I say you got to accept what the boat can do and what it cannot do. So the boat will go faster if your blade rests calmly in the water uh, and, and you move the boat past the blade rather than trying to plow with the blade through the water because that is going to cause a lot of instability and it's going to make the boat slow or slower than you actually could be. Now this is what they achieved. I think they are si they're super well in they responded super well here at the catch. You actually see a lot of a lot of good things going for them. Now, one of the next thing, one of the next things I pointed out was the shoulder blade mobility. You see that Bowger, for example, she she tries to reach out. She tries to have more length. Everybody's being taught, hey, you need more length. You need to be long. Makes sense. However, uh, the stability of your body is always more important than length. So. Um, some people say length is the ultimate atium. No, I don't think so. Having a stable setup in your trunk is key. Because what's the use of having a long reach at the catch if it takes you ages to connect? And that's what you see with most of, most of the athletes who try to reach, reach forward a lot. And especially in sweep rowing, one of, one of the traps is to reach forward. But let's say I'm rowing, let's say I'm rowing bow, okay? I'm at the finish here. And I go forward. Now, one of the traps is to actually say, ah, oh, I want to have more length, so I reach. And what happens is my outside shoulder actually goes lower than my inside shoulder. We think, okay, it's not a big deal. It is. Because what it does, the outside shoulder has a long, has lo much leverage and much say over where the blade is going to be. So if you reach forward, your outside shoulder goes deeper than your inside shoulder. First of all, your inboard points this way, your shoulder points the other way. That's not good, okay? Inboard that way, shoulder that way. Mm -mm. Secondly, going forward, outside shoulder down, hand down, blade up. And if that happens at the catch, namely here, that's a pretty bad position, especially when everybody wants to have a quote unquote quick catch, which in my humble opinion is complete nonsense. We want a slow catch, a slow connection. 
but precise catch. Precision always pays more. It doesn't matter if you talk about stroke at 14 or 35. In relation, the catch is a pretty slow process. It's not quick. You can mess up so much at the catch. A quick catch is not what we're looking for. So it doesn't matter if you're a super beginner on the earth, you just pop by, saw this video about a pair, was interesting. No, a quick catch is... <sighs> the intention of a quick catch messes up almost everything. No matter how good your preparation is, that aggressive leg drive, hard, but it's, forget it. It, it. It's not what you want. You want stability to hold the body so that you can use leverage over mid drive. Rowing is a leverage game. It has not much to do with pushing and pulling. All right, let's check the next video. So this is when I told them, look, we need a bit more shoulder blade mobility on the way forward. And they couldn't quite pick it up. They couldn't quite understand what I meant. Shoulder blade mobility is the key when it comes to preparing for the drive. I hear it to finish, okay? When you lead out, the most important thing is that your shoulders are not too stiff, especially in speed rowing, your outside shoulder. You move out and then you want to move along with the, with the entire inboard. So what you need is the shoulder blade mobility, namely that. This mobility is huge. I was in sculling. Most people try to do this, try to be stiff, but if you're stiff, you're not gonna move along with the boat. So it's that cat-like motion you need. You do need a lot of stability here in the core. Don't get me wrong. This needs to be, that baby needs to be stable. However, in the shoulders, you need to be able to move with, with the inboards, okay? And that's what I was referring to. The issue is that bow women and also stroke try to bring the shoulders forward just before the catch. And that's a bit too late because this is where the shoulders should become tight. Finish position. Lead out, be loose, only in your shoulder girdle. Get a bit of a stretch. That brings your shoulders and shoulder muscles under tension, quote unquote shoulder muscles. Also involves a bunch of muscles around your lat. And as you approach the catch, you want to tighten these things up. So forward, don't stay loose at the catch. If you stay loose just before the catch, it's going to disintegrate. So you need to protect it, tighten it up. But first you need to put it in a bit of a stretch. This engages your lat and then the lat connects to the rest of the core. And this is how you can get the leverage game going. You need to transfer force quickly here. Let me show you from, uh, the, from your hands into your core. And the quickest way to do this is to bring the shoulder down. Bring the shoulder down means you need to prepare it well. So hands lead out, move the shoulders. Don't dislocate it, but move it forward a bit. Stretch in the lat, stretch in the shoulder blade. Go forward, and there's a nice muscle called Tetis Mayo. Um, thank you, Charlie, for pointing this one out. And you go to the catch, and this is when oh, you, you tighten it. But the thing is, you don't want to cramp. You just want to, in an anticipating way, prepare the muscle for what's to come. And connect, activating these muscles is hugely important, and not these muscles here. It's the lower ones. They will also be active, but these are the ones I primarily want to engage. Because from here, it's not far into my core, and my core is connected to the rest of my body, and this is where I need to, A, to have my center of gravity, so I sit low and deep in the boat, and B, this is where I, have, I need to have all the tension, so that when my upper body swing engages, it has an immediate effect, and I don't need to go over the shoulders with tight shoulders. So whenever you see crews doing this at the catch, they haven't engaged that one here before. So that's one of the key takeaways. This is where you see where bow woman is actually able to stabilize a bit better. Her shoulders are still responding a bit too late. And you can see this here. Here at the catch, you see? I'm referring to that point where my cursor is. Blade in the water. Now she feels the force. And now you see that this one is tightening up a bit. It's black, so it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to see, actually. But you see it in motion. So there's a bit too much stretch. And now she tightens up just when the blade gets into the water. And the way she tightens up is actually with the motion, and the idea is to omit the motion completely. They're fixed and stable, okay? So for me, it feels like compressing the shoulders into the lap. That's, yeah, Teres Mayer, it's a little muscle right there, hugely important. But it, that fluidity and that, yeah, beautiful. So they use leverage, but at the same time, they are pretty cat-like, you know, but like a line. That smoothness, huge, beautiful. Very interesting video now from the other side. Now you can see that how the shoulder blades and how the shoulder girdle engages with the inboard. They really try to stay parallel. They were already on a very good path, but 
in a pair, it's important not to focus on stability alone. You don't want to be in the water at the same time and out of the water at the same time. The key is to understand that your force curves will eventually not be the same. If you've got a good feeling, and they certainly have, eventually one will start to use the upper body early and one will start to use the upper body later if you do it right. I hope you don't overcompensate with just a harder arm pull. But um, just look at that. Or bends around perpendicular. Upper body still in a forward position. Awesome. That's so cool. And the idea in a pair is that although your force curves will not be perfectly overlapping, you still want to make sure there's more overlap than in other boats. Understand me? Most people in a pair would actually focus on, oh, being in the water at the same time, exit at the same time, it's all good. Then you have to steer a bit, so essentially you shorten your stroke so that your influence on the boat is not too much. Sounds ironical, ambiguous, but that's exactly what happens. In a pair, um, that's, was, that's what I was referring to earlier. See, look at, look at stroke. The stroke at the catch, so she, her blade is now pretty much at the center of the boat. But bow has the blade much closer to the bow. Does that make sense? So the effect is a significantly different. Now at the finish, stroke blade is very close to the stern. That's a good opportunity to steer the boat, whereas the bow blades are pretty close to the center. Not a good opportunity to steer. And that makes the boat usually go a bit like this. Um, if you want to go back to one of the first World Cup videos of the Sinkovich brothers, was it 2017? Yeah, I think it was 2017 Sarasota of World Championships. Um, I cannot play it, it's uh, FISA protected. Then you will see the Sinkovich brothers actually having quite significant steering issues. And that was when they still used the way um, they still use that upper body swing, which is super well synchronized from the double. They just um, became Olympic champions 2016 in Rio. They moved to the pair. And in the pair, essentially, they rode the pair like a double. But the, double cannot, the pair cannot be rode like a double. The pair consists of two different force curves in order to make the boat go straight. So one needs to be cautious at the catch and one needs to be cautious at the finish. But my point I'm trying to convey here is, yes, you do, you do need different force curves, but don't cut the stroke short for the sake of having not much steering influence in the boat. You do want to be cautious at the catch and one needs to be cautious at the finish. However, mid-drive, make sure the overlap face is long. And that was the message I gave them. Long story, but hey, there's a lot to think about in rowing. And, and, and the one thing they, they've got going for them so well is their ability to go with the inboard. You see here at the catch, that one. See this connection here? I mean, I'm probably rowing enthusiast, mildly put. And if I see something, if I see bodies moving in tune with the boat, it just makes my heart go wild. It's, it makes me happy. It literally fulfills me. Probably this is why I have become a coach. You know, if somebody makes progress uh, with the training and I see the training plan works, this fulfills me. This is why I've become a coach. It's, it's, one, it's one of the most fulfilling things to see. See here at the catch, blade engages, uh, the shoulder girdle, is going with the inboard. She's using her shoulder girdle around the pin. That here is spectacular. This is exactly how it should be. And, and now the trunk is so compact, leg drive engages, and now she's using upper body swing. Sorry, but it can't get any better. I mean, outing number four or five, this is insane. This is insanely good. I don't know how far they're gonna make it, also physically speaking. Yeah, ah, look how they tap down. <laughs> It's it's so nice to see this here at the finish, you see? That's the precision I'm referring to. In, feather, hole. You could tap down a bit more. I think they're too close to the water here. But the precision they've got is that. See that tiny vertical motion? How she engages tension with her hands? Yeah, that is quite something. One, one thing they're still not doing 100% perfectly, I think, is that they... Don't pull the boat, but that's early to call. Um, at that stage here, so here at the finish, this is when you should hold the knees a little longer. So namely the quadriceps around the knees, this is where you can hold the tension with the foot stretchers. It doesn't mean that at the finish you have, your feet have to push into the feet, uh, foot stretchers all the time. That's not the case, but you should at least stay connected to the boat. Um, then you do the rock over, mainly with the pelvis. Shoulder blade goes forward, pelvis. 
and then you feel a bit of tension in your hamstrings. When you've got tension in your hamstrings, this is when you need to start uh, the boat. You, you need to let the boat go. That's essentially all that happens. So you release it. Literally speaking, you release it. And then you use your body weight as a mass anchor. Um, you know, these ladies are much heavier, no offense, but you know, any human being is heavier than a boat, than a pair. So of course you can use your body as a mass anchor. So it, it works through tension. You know, look at all these dancers, acrobatic dancers, rock and roll dancers. Um, the, the reason why some of these stunts work and tricks work is because they have body control and body tension. It's a very similar principle. Um, so my sister used to be a tournament dancer and, and you know, a couple of years ago I asked her, hey, can you, have, can you hold a lesson for us? So she taught us a bunch of things about pelvic mobility and things you should be able to do with your body. It was pretty awkward, but fascinating at the same point of time. And this is when I started to realize, ah, okay, I get it, you know, it's body control. If you want to control the boat, it's huge deal, body control. So I like to look at these elements as, uh, rowing is not about power alone, no, it's actually moving the boat. And this is what we tend to forget, and that's what they still need to learn. But again, outing number four or five, huge. I'm looking forward to seeing them again. Here, that, this is what I'm referring to. Knees down a little longer and uh, rock over and now at that stage your knees should still be down you should be celebrate a bit the tension the hamstrings and then release it with a snap essentially and uh, then the boat starts to travel towards the bow this is how you get the second acceleration phase going in a rowing stroke cycle there should be two two acceleration phases so one is here with the blade you fix the blade in the water more or less and you, you propel the blade past the you propel the boat past the fixed blade Look at that bend here. <laughs> it's so good. Or it's bent. This is what I'm referring to. And then at the here, when you release, you prepare your upper body and your arms. This is pretty much the only time you actively move yourself. This is so arms out, upper body out, pelvis rock over. Create tension in the hamstrings. And um, then you let the boat come. You let her travel. And one, one of the metaphors I use is that the seat has wheels, not for you to slide forward, but for the boat to travel underneath your butt. This is why it's got wheels. Um, and although it may technically not be 100% accurate, just the cue helps to move in the right way or not move. I think rowing is not so much about how you move, it's also how, how you make the boat go without moving yourself. That for me is the essence of a rowing stroke. All right. Well, ladies and gents, with this being said, if you want to work with me, go to rmtraining.com. Um, I do life coaching sessions um, online, on water and indoors. Every Saturday, we've got two sessions going on. They're training packages where we have weekly one-on-ones or even more one-on-ones per week. And I do write training plans. That's one of my, yeah, that's essentially my key competence is what I do the most. Writing training plans, developing athletes, juniors, on a 23s, Olympic athletes, entire teams, um, and certainly masters athletes. You would think, how can you work with everybody? Well, what counts for me is how, the fun part for me is not necessarily uh, the absolute level. The fun part for me is to see somebody grow and develop. That's, again, what brings me joy. This is what I like to do. So I think I'm quite decent at that, to be polite. I try to be the best I can possibly be. There's much I need to learn, like everybody, but I'm passionate about it. Seeing somebody develop is huge, and I'm now into, I just turned 40 years old, started coaching when I was 14, teaching adults how to row. So I'm in coaching year number 26. I've got quite a bit of experience under my belt, and I'd like to share it with you. rmtraining.com is the internet address. Looking forward to work with you. If you haven't subscribed, I usually don't ask for it, but today I will. Hit the subscribe button would be appreciated you know the more subscribers i've got the more time we can spend with these videos um they're ranked higher i don't know how the algorithm works keeps on changing but it's just sharing subscribing liking all that stuff interacting but i admit i haven't been the best with answering your comments shame on me i will do my best but this video actually is a response to one of the comments that being said i'm very much looking forward to further comments from you and to see you in the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.